pray. Napoleon Hill said, if you do not think about your age, it is not there. I'm so happy to be here today to hear the music, the challenges on missions. My friend, you, do just, you, you just do not know that what you did to me and probably to everybody over here is to be able to be touched by something that, folks, you cannot understand. If God is working anywhere in the world, he is working in the Philippines. I'm so proud. I was thinking about Buddy Byers the other day. And can you imagine a man like Buddy Byers would be involved in something like this in order to take care of the finances of every missionary in every mission field? You do not realize the burden, the heaviness. And yet for all the things that he has done, many of us probably mentioned by the, by the buyers, not very often. But I would think of him as a dear brother who has given himself to the Lord Jesus Christ and his ministry. Folks, listen carefully. If there is any solution in the problems of missions, the solution is in your hands. When you get saved, God gave you the nature of Jesus Christ. The Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 6, verse number 23, for the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through what? Through Jesus Christ. When you receive that gift, you have the nature of Jesus Christ. And my friend, it would really be a great, great thing for you to think about it. I really appreciate by the Ray. This church has done a lot of things for missions. And Brother Ray is not really the greatest person in the world, and yet his willing heart is there to live up the name of Jesus Christ, to promote his name and the gospel. Missions. In terms of finances, missions is money. In terms of business, missions is investment. In terms of duty, missions is sacrifice. In terms of authority, missions is submission. In terms of principle, missions is instruction. In terms of command, missions is obedience. And the only best thing for us to, re, to, re, to, to do about the will of God is for you and I to obey. And the Bible says when you obey, you'll be blessed. In terms of event, mission is the good news of salvation. As the Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 1 verse number 16, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God of the salvation to everyone that believeth to the Jew first and also to the Greeks. And in terms of result, missions is souls to be saved. Every time you give a peso, you are saying to the Lord, Lord, here is my peso. Use it for your glory. And one day there will be a person that will approach you and come to you and say, thank you for sacrificing. This evening I want you to open your Bible to the book of Philippians chapter 1. I'm glad to see the missionaries that are here today. I'm so grateful. Philippians chapter 1. And in verse number 12, 13, 14. I want everybody to stand, please. Philippians chapter 1. 
verses 13, 14, and 15. Well, let's start with 12, okay? Together, please. Verse number 12, 13, 14, right there you go. But I would you should understand, brethren, the things which happen unto me have fallen out rather after the fatherance of the gospel, so that my bonds in Christ are manifest in all the palace and in all, and many of the brethren in the Lord, waxing confident by my bonds, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. Tonight, I'm going to speak on the subject, the things which happened and to me. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love for us, the opportunity to preach, to promote the gospel, and to promote your name, I pray, that tonight, dear Lord, you will be touching our hearts. Speak to us. And for those who are here, dear Lord, that are ready and prepared to abandon themselves in your will, may you be the one to guide them by the Holy Spirit. And, O Lord, I want you to be honored and be glorified tonight. Thank you for Brother A and this church. And thank you for all the pastors that are here that are doing great in missions. Doing the best they can in the means of the, of the, of the diminished income. Yet we are there trying to do our best in order to send a missionary around the world. This is your command. And help us to obey. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. In January 28, 1986, the Seattle Challenger exploded 73 seconds after it was launched. It went up 4 kilometers, 40,000 feet above the Atlantic Ocean, and exploded and killed seven astronauts, including Christy McCulloch from New Hampshire, who would have been the first female teacher that would have gone to outer space. And can you just imagine with all the preparations they had made, at the beginning, the media said it was a perfect lunch, but 73 seconds later, it exploded in midair. And even the engineers themselves do not know what happened. When that tragedy happened, President Reagan went on nationwide television and he said his words. I know it is hard to understand that sometimes painful and desirable things like this can happen. But it's all a part of the process of exploration and discovery. It's all part of taking a chance of expanding our horizons. The future does not belong to the faint-hearted. It belongs to the, to the brave. It belongs to the courageous. The Challenger crew was trying to put us into the future. And we will follow and continue to follow. Those are comforting, I would say hard-touching statement from the President of the United States of America. But I want you to know that the emotions, the painful things that happened in the families of the seven astronauts could never be described in words. With all the expense that NASA had made in order to expand their, their exploration and, and discovery, that thing happened. The words of the president was to encourage, in spite of all of the things that had transpired, the president was encouraging. And from that time on, ladies and gentlemen, it was not finished. It, although it stopped the launching of other shuttles and delayed the schedules, the scientists, the engineers, and all of those working in order to, to, to put up a communication station in outer space. They continued to work on, and today, ladies and gentlemen, America is the most 
excellent. And are probably the best communication station than any country in the world in outer space. Because the engineers and the scientists will not discourage in spite of the tragedy. Pastor, what I'm saying, what are you saying today? There will be indesirable things that will happen to you in, the, in your Christian life. But my friend, we ought never to be discouraged. If one soul matters to God, it should matter to us. And I think tonight, we ought to understand that thing, three things in this message. Number one, undesirable things will happen to you. You cannot escape adversity. You cannot escape difficulty. You can escape persecution. You can escape suffering, criticism. Philippians 1.29, for unto you it is given in the behalf of Christ, not only to believe on him, but also to suffer for his sake. You cannot avoid adversity. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, chapter 2 and verse number 24. Of the Jews, five times receive I forty strive, save one. Paul was preaching the gospel, trying to share the gospel to people, and you know what happened? They tried to they 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 they, they tried to give him 195 stripes. Pero bunalan ng kasalikod. Dili lang usa. Karang ganing usa kuyaw na. 195 pagyud mas kuyaw. When I was a little boy, my father would say, you did something wrong. I want you to remember what is there in post number four. My father would say that, I know what that means. If three strikes is terrible, 195 times is much more. Then he said in verse number 25, Thrice I was beaten with rods. Paul was faithfully serving the Lord and he was beaten. Thrice I was shipwrecked. 1979, we just finished our mission conference in Bible Baptist Church, Tacloban City. And we said goodbye to Brother Yero. And I said, Brother Yero, we are going to Cebu. Today is, today is Friday. Tomorrow is Saturday and we're going to have Bible study and visitation and all of these things. And I said, we have to hurry. We have to take the boat. He said, but the Yero said, no, there is a typhoon. There is a typhoon. We did not believe him. Because we have been joking all the time. You know, sometimes we joke all the time. And when you say the real thing, we, we think it's still a joke. But we went to the ticket office and I looked at everybody and said, Nga naman nga ming hui mo. Insya di man tapala ko. Isa di nang ingon. Ang Coast Guard. Hay man mga Coast Guard. Na ay. Ang mga Coast Guard ming hui sad. So what we did was wait a little bit and after a while I saw a San Miguel beer given to one Coast Guard, passed through under the table. And another San Miguel beer passed under the table to the other Coast Guard. I told Brother Inad, I said, Brother Inad, we are going. We are going to leave tonight. We are going to sail. But the Yero says, there is typhoon, we are going to sail. Mga I will tell you this. Tinood nga nag-sail me, pero 10 minutes after we got out of the Tacluan Harbor, Typhoon, waves, rain, lightning, all of that. And after a while, we were not lying down on our ter in our in our in our in our cots or our terrace. We were all standing. We were on the side. My sonan, this is a little funny, but you know, I confess all my sins. During the time, I said, "Lord, whatever happens, I for please forgive me of my sins." But you know, typhoons will come. 
thrice I was beaten, I was shipwrecked. That was a blessing. He was going somewhere and he was shipwrecked. But what happened to him was a blessing in disguise. That was not how he planned it, but there was a divine design to everything he experienced. It was undesirable, but it was on his way to his God-given destiny. And I'm afraid that sometimes when something happens to us, we get upset. We get angry. Masukuta. Nga nung mauna yung itabo. Do you know why it happens that way? Because, you know, we do not see the will of God in it. 1959, November 10. November 1 to 10 was our enrollment for my third year, second year medical training in Far Eastern University. The enrollment was closed on, 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 on the 10th of November. And I was in my dormitory and I was really crying. Folks, listen carefully. I have never cried as much as I cried during the time. Tungod kaya ang akong kwarta para enrollment wa mo abot. I was blaming God. I was blaming my parents. I was blaming everybody in the world. Why the money did not come? And when it came, it was November 13. And the, the, the enrollment was already closed. We went to the dean with, a, with, a, with my classmate, Rosalinda from Batangas. I said, Rosalinda, let's go to the dean's office and, uh, you know, ask our dean if he will enroll us. And the dean said, no, it's closed. Okay, so it was a great disappointment. I did not like what happened. And I said to myself, you know, Doon mga tao nga gamay ng problema o suicide. Di ba? Gamay nga problema. Kini mga guwapa, doon ay problema, suicide. Kung guwapa ka mo, ayaw mo suicide. Kana mga bungi, gani mga bakol, di mag suicide. Niya ka mo nga guwapa o guwapa mag suicide. Naon sa moy? Kana gani bungol? Di mag suicide. But I will tell you this. When that happened, I said, what will I do? I will go home, be in the farm again. But you know, I did not, I was not discouraged. I called Cebu. Southwest University, I talked to the dean. And you know what he said? You come, we are still open until November 20. Mga egso, nangungutang ko kwarta para mo sa kay aeroplano para si Bo. Ambot ko na bayran ako na to. My problem was I did not know how to speak Cebuano. But you know, if you have the will, you will have the way. When I arrived, the first thing I did was to go to the YMCA. And then I put my bags on room number seven, second floor. Then I asked the guard, I said, where is a Baptist church over here? And the guard said, you go this way and at the back of Normal University, Cebu Normal University, Pilai Street, there is a Baptist church over there. When I went, it was not a Baptist church. It was a UCC Piat church. <laughs> and they thought it is a Baptist. But anyway, I was there looking around and I, see a I saw a lady walking around. I said, uh, I forgot my problems. <laughs> anyway, I found a place to go to church on Sunday. And uh, when I arrived in the church that following Sunday, I was looking for the adult department. And uh, 
And they said, he's over there. Just go over here and uh, there's an open door and there's the adult department. And we went to the, to, the, to the room. Do you know who was teaching? The lady I first saw on Saturday. Oh. Folks, when you see a beautiful lady, beautiful lady on Saturday, you will see her again on Sunday. I went into that room, and uh, I did not want to stay at the, in front. I, was, I, I wanted to stay at the back. And when I was looking at the back, my ROTC commandant was there at the back. He said, and we were there. He was really diligently writing every note of the teaching. That lady that I saw on Saturday, she was teaching. And my professors in medicine was there in front. The engineers are there. The bank manager uh, and the, 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 the China banking lawyer well, was there in front listening to the lady. And uh, uh, Captain Delphine from Iloilo City was writing all of the, the notes. And, but I was, I was there over there. I had no ball pen, no piece of paper. But my friend, I was not interested in the lesson. <laughs> my, le my, my interest was something else that you do not know about. <laughs> Can you imagine how God orchestrated the events in my life? I was not able to enroll. I went to Cebu. And so this lady, we got married and they lived happily ever after. <laughs> Then we got involved in Bible church. I got involved in Sunday school. I got involved in song leading. I got involved in the choir. And I believe, for ladies and gentlemen, that I am here today because of that one event. 1965, after I passed the medical board, Bob, you said, Reggie Salva, maybe you ought to teach the Sunday school. I said, Pastor, no, not yet. I, I think I will, I will wait until I learn how to teach Sunday school. Bob Hughes wisely said, well, Brother Salva, while you are waiting, you teach your first lesson. And my first lesson was the three wise men. I have not <laughs> forgotten that. The things that happened to me was not to destroy me. The thing that happened to me was not to take me away. It was a bad thing. But my friend, the Lord was still leading me to my own personal destiny. Sometimes when things happen, we get upset. The bad part is when something happens, we change our plans and turn our back. Instead of allowing the situation to produce the desired result, Paul said in verse number 26, In perils by mine own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils by the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren, these are perils. There are many perilous things in our life. You cannot decide what other people will do to you, but ladies and gentlemen, you can decide how to respond to their mistreatment. The longer I stay in the ministry, the more I discover the heartaches of people. Somebody you love is going through. And Paul said, the things which happened to me were not good. That is not to say that nothing good will happen by chance. But Paul said, they have fallen out rather, not for my destruction, not to eliminate me in the world, but for the furtherance of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> Secondly, not only that undesirable things can happen to you, but number two, undesirable things can lead you to doubt or question the integrity of God. 
Some people say, if God really loves me, why is it that he did, not, he did allow those things to happen to me? If God is loving, why did he not change the situation where he was in? We begin to question the wisdom of God. We begin to question the mercy of God. We begin to question the love of God. We begin to question the goodness of God. You remember Simon Peter? In chapter 14 of the book of, of Matthew, we find there that Simon Peter was walking on water. While he was there, the Bible says in chapter 14 and verse number uh, 26, and when the disciples saw him walking in the sea, Jesus Christ was walking in the sea, they were troubled, saying, it is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them and said, be of good cheer, it is I. Be not afraid. Can you imagine? They were afraid of the Lord Jesus Christ. Ang uban ni Ingon, eh, naya May soon ang ginoo di labat, oy. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And Jesus said, Come. And the Bible says, And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. Now, carefully, when Simon Peter was walking on the water, he was focused on the Lord Jesus Christ. He was looking at Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ was walking on the water. The moment he, he stopped focusing his eyes on the Lord Jesus Christ and looked at the stormy boisterous waves, the Bible says that he sunk. Jesus Christ continued to, continue to walk on water. The very platform that caused the defeat and the sinking of Simon Peter is the very platform that Jesus Christ was walking in victory. My friends, sometimes we look at the Lord Jesus Christ, we have no problem. But when the problem gets hard, we do not look at the, what the Lord Jesus Christ anymore. And then we sink. The problem in our ministry is not really that we cannot do anything about the problems we have. The problem is we are not willing to look at the Lord Jesus Christ. We are not willing to focus on him because he is the solution to every problem. He is the solution. Some people think that, you know, you have to be rich to, to solve the problem. No, no. Jesus Christ will help you solve the problem. As you will find that the Apostle Paul is telling us that, you know, we need to understand that undesirable things will happen unto us. Undesirable things can make you to question. When he sung, Jesus said, Ye of little faith, why did you doubt? Sometimes the reason why we sink in problems is because we doubt that God can solve our problem. We doubt. We begin to question. And then thirdly, undesirable things can prepare you to your greatest usefulness. You remember Joseph in Genesis chapter 50? Well, it starts with verse number 37. We will not read the whole account, but number one, in the case of Joseph, his father loved him. And because he loved him, he made him a coat of many colors. Then secondly, his blood brothers throw him into the pit. Salungag. And then thirdly, 
They sold him into slavery. You know how much? 20 pieces of silver. Can you imagine ang imo mga igsoon ibalig ya kag 20 20 pesos? Tarawa na. And then not only that, number four, he was accused of molesting Mrs. Potiphar. Akong huna-huna, lisod kining guwapo. Kabisan gani minyo, si Mrs. Potiphar gud na. Pero kini si Mrs. Potiphar sa tingali, sa akong huna-huna lang ni. Mura guwapa sa ni. Kaya ang iyang ba na hiniral? Ang ah, ang hiniral ka gudo niya. Mangita kag Kamuray kay ba o? <laughs> But you know, Joseph was placed in prison for a crime that he did not commit. My friend, one day, as a Christian, you will be accused of something that you did not commit. Usahin kita ng atong itsura. Maantoy. Your rival think that because of this, the thing that I like about this is Things are happening, but you know, the Bible says, and the Lord was with Joseph. Three times, and the Lord was with Joseph. Say it. And the Lord was with Joseph. And the president was with Ray, so brought no, it's not. The Lord was with Joseph. God was using the undesirable things in this situation to make him the number two man in Egypt. And you know what happened? From the pit to become prime minister of Egypt. Yeah, Muna. Ilabay ka sa iyong mga kaisunan dito sa lungag. Pero okay lang. May so on, listen carefully. When, Sada, see, when somebody mistreat you, do not retaliate. Because the Bible says, vengeance is mine, I will repay. If somebody will insult you, criticize you, Inom ka nga, ikaw ang upawa ka. Pero kung tinood man sa'yo, ayaw lang retaliate. Inom pa tayo, ikaw ang dakugkaon. Ikaw nga, una. Never mind, if you are a Christian, listen carefully. The Lord is with you. Ano mo mag si Jesus my vengeance is mine, I will repay. Do you know why? If you're a Christian, say amen. amen. That means to say, if you are saved, the Lord will be with you all the time. Amen. Whether in the pit, in the prison, wherever you are, you belong to the Lord Jesus Christ. You belong to his family. And God is going to take care of you. Then what happened in verse number 20 of Genesis chapter, chapter 50? Joseph said, But as for you, you thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good to bring to pass as it is this day to save much people. Kung wala si Joseph, ang mga ihip, ang mga hudiyo dito sa, sa Egypt, they would have been killed with a famine. 
They have been killed by hard situations. But listen carefully. God raised up Joseph to become the prime minister of Egypt and was able to gather all the, all the grain in all Egypt. And that seven-year famine saved all the Jews that were there in Egypt during that particular time. My friend, a desirable thing is will prepare you to your greatest usefulness. What was the greatest usefulness of, of, of Joseph? He became prime minister, close to the king, and was used by the Lord to save the Jews that are there in Egypt during the time. Secondly, you remember Paul? Second Corinthians chapter 12. You find that the apostle Paul had a thorn in the flesh. And the Bible says that he prayed three times. He said, Lord, please remove the thorn in the flesh because I can serve you better if there is no thorn in the flesh. You know what the Lord said in essence? In essence, the Lord is saying, Paul, I cannot use you if I remove the thorn in the flesh. Did you not know that sometimes the Lord is going to allow a thorn in your life to be able to refine you and educate you and take away anything that is not good in your life and make you to be useful to the Lord? And Jesus said, my grace is sufficient for thee. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. And so you find here that because of that, the Apostle Paul said, Most gladly, therefore, will I glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. No, Paul! I have a purpose for the thorn in the flesh. Kung nagkalisod-lisod ka sa imong ministry karun, there is a purpose why it is so. There is a purpose. There is a purpose. There is a purpose. Tingali ang purpose niya na aron ikabot sa takong blessing. You will appreciate the Lord better. Somebody said, the blessings of the, of the Lord, it make it rich. But the wife gets it. <laughs> you believe that? Kining mga asawa. Nangapon di, usana mo ka di ko sa pastor. Kung ang ginuunta, wala lang nahimuha kining mga babae, wala tayo problema. Kaya nung mayroon nung problema sa kalibutan, babae. <laughs> babaeng kanding, babaeng baboy, tanan, basta babae. Dagang problema ni. Magpinatya na yung duha kalalaki, na jilos. Tungkol sa babae. May yung tagwa na ni. Sa Garden of Eden, kasi problema. Oo. Oh. Hey, bomo. <laughs> Pero ingon sa brother Jenny, Pero kung wa sa'y babae, puting mingawa. <laughs> Wala mo kahit ba, oh, kini, maging kung mga, kini mga babae mga problema, di ni problema, oy. Eh. Maunin makasolve sa problema sa mga lalaki? Nga naman, Mas marang-arang manig utok ang mga babae. <laughs> Oo. Oh. Sa akin ni Maraki, magpa magpauli. Dili kay bawo nga, ang ganang dalan. Dura si bawo nga duha ka bawo isa pre. Mo paulo yung tako pero batuyo kang kalibutan. Ingon siya, kung gatuyo ang kalibutan, lingkod na tang dire. Nga naman. Kaya nagtuyo sa kalibutan ang imong bahay, muagi na, dire.
Oh. Lingkod lang siya. Kay muagi man ang bahay niya. Wan siya boli. Doon ay lalaki ng ingin siya nga tayo. Paano sa man kining mangita at ang trabaho sa siyudad, sa Cebu? Isanak, inigawot ni mo sa pantalan, makakita ka gani ka grupo-grupo, trabaho na na. Apil ka na niya na. Pagkabot niya sa pantalan, gikin sa tubigon, dito. Pagkag sinumbagay, grupo-grupo good. Ikuha niya yung backpack, ibutan niya doon sa daplin. Apil siya dito. Apil siya. Pagkahibaw sa nagsinumbagay, doon ay nagsagol nga huwag siya kaila, siya ay gisumbag. Black eye, gadugo ang, 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 ang dalunggan, gadulog, going along, di na sa kikita. Tawad-tawad din yung sunrise, up, 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 half day lang ako, half day. Half day. Pahuli siya sa, sa, sa buhol. E sa naka, kamusta man ang pangitag tra pa, trabaho sa, 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 sa siyudad? Isa tayo. Tanawin na akong si Juan. Lisude ay kinig mangitag at trabaho sa siyudad. Nga naman. Tarawin na akong isura. Hap din. <laughs> Hap din lang ni. Doon ay mga tao din eh, ngangit sura, half day. That's why the Apostle Paul in spite of the throne of the flesh, he said, Therefore I take pleasure in my infirmities, in my reproaches, in my necessities, in my persecution, in my distress. For when I am weak, then am I made strong. Ladies and gentlemen, when the plan of God is yours, remember how grateful we are, we should be. For I am weak, and Paul became the greatest apostle of the New Testament. Number two, he wrote 14 epistles that promoted the gospel and promoted the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Undesirable things can prepare you for your greatest usefulness. And one day as the Apostle Paul was old, he was walking. One day he saw the sun shining and he looked up the sky and he said, for I am now ready to be offered. In the time of departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is later for me a crown of righteousness which the Lord the righteous judge shall give me at the day. And not to me only. But all them that love is appearing. If you love the appearing of the Lord Jesus Christ tonight, ladies and gentlemen, you will do your best to promote his name. You will be available for him. You will abandon your life in the hands of the Lord Jesus Christ. Sometimes, many times, we stay away and we do not like the ministry. Folks, listen carefully. I used not to like the ministry. Because I wanted, to make, to, well, I wanted to continue my medical practice. When I turned my back on my medical practice in 1972, closed my clinic and everything, gave away all my instruments, I gave myself full time in the ministry, focusing carefully. I cannot describe the joy that I have in serving the Lord Jesus Christ. Mga isuunan ang gino dili kakawangan sa mga panalangin ngayon hatag niya. The Lord is going to bless you. Somebody asked me, Pastor, do you miss practicing medicine? Mulang? Tinood na. But my friend, I will not miss serving God. For as long as there is breath in my nostrils. The other day, nandun ay nangutan na, Ah, binakog, tiguan na si Pastor Jusalva. Ingo, sa'yo mong una-una, 
Pilay akong edad. Ah, siguro mga 50 city. Kinalaging atong hitsura, usahay maka, makakuan ba yan? Makalipat ba? <laughs> Pero lipat-lipat lang ni, kang antinood no 22 ni. <laughs> Doon sa amin yung nagkandidato pagka barangay captain. Noy! Nga nung magkandidato ko mga barangay captain na 90 anos ka na. Tiguan ka na. Ang inyong pagtanaw na ako, Tiguang Piro Panite. <laughs> Aragon Paghihapon. <laughs> Joseph became Prime Minister. His greatest usefulness. Paul he became the greatest apostle, wrote 14 epistles, had a great ministry in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in, in the New Testament area. Then we see the Lord Jesus Christ, his greatest usefulness. They put a crown of thorns upon his brow. My friend, the Lord Jesus Christ started bleeding. They pulled his beard and he was bleeding. They hit him with a hard, with a hard, with a hard hand, and he was bleeding. They got a tail of, 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 of uh, the whip under the back, coat of nine tails, and they whip him at the back. And focus listen carefully. Every time they pull that one, the flesh goes with it, with the, with the, with the, with the, with the, uh, uh, with the whip, and it it exposes his his his, his ribs. His bones. And he was bleeding. Tagdugo. Then after that, they nailed his hands. They nailed his feet. And he was bleeding. As if that was not enough, they struck him with a sword in the side and he was bleeding. From the top of the head, the sole of his foot, Jesus Christ was bleeding. Do you know why? The Bible says in 1 Peter 2.24, who his own self bear our sins in his body on the tree, that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes we are healed. Folks, if there is any moment in your life that you ought to give yourself to the Lord, now that you are still healthy, now that you are still able, if you give yourself to the Lord, you know what the Lord will do to you? God will use you. Like these missionaries who line up here. I was looking at them and I said, my praise the Lord. I wish that all of the people in this church tonight will surrender their lives to the Lord and go to the mission field. There was a man who was 85 years old. Nag-imbitar ang pastor. Ingon sa pastor, Noy! Pila may imong edad? In sa 85 anyos dong? Nga nung nag-forward ka man nga wa na kay ngipon. In sa man di ayon ministry, pinakay ni. <laughs> and folks, joking aside, now is the time for you to determine and say, Lord, by your grace, I will be available. 1965, 1967, 1972, I said, Lord, I am available. I'll close my clinic and I'll give myself to you. My wife came to me one day and she said, Gamera ako ng asawa? Pero king gining gamay, unya moana sa ilang sa hawak? Mura giganti? Why did you close your clinic? What will happen to us? The schooling of the children, the food on our, on our table. Ngano? Ngano? Mga isoon ang akong asawa, ngano, ngano, pero mga isoon ang panalangin, dili, nimo mangano. 
Because God's blessing will come to you if, you if you're going to give yourself to the Lord. He will open the windows and pour out blessings to you and make you happy. Sometimes we think that we can be fulfilled by doing this and that. You can never fulfill, be fulfilled until you obey the will of God. And I testify to you at 92 years old that God has given me fulfillment simply because of the things that God allowed me to do. Maybe as simple as can be. But tonight, listen carefully. If you were a Joseph, if you were the Apostle Paul, if Jesus Christ had sacrificed themselves to the point where they have been at the point where they have been useful, you can also be useful and God will prepare you to be useful if you'll be willing to come to the Lord. Every head bowed, every eye closed. No one looking around. Where is bowed, eyes are closed. Listen carefully. Listen carefully. If the Lord has spoken to you in this message, I would like for you to make a decision to come to the Lord tonight. Make a decision to be available to Him. Surrender your life to the Lord. And tonight, maybe when your head is bowed, eyes are closed, maybe you'll say, Pastor, please include me in prayer. I would like myself to be obedient, to be available to the Lord, to be useful to Him, so that I can glorify Him, I can promote the gospel, I can promote His name. Pastor, please pray for me. Would you raise your hand? God bless you, God bless you, God bless you, all over there, all over there, all over there, all over there. I would like to ask where the music goes. I would like to ask all of the men first. Tanang mga lalaki, stand to your feet, go to the aisle, and come right here. Brother Tutong, please help. Tabangin sila. Come on, okay, come here. Come on, you brother. I would like the men to come first. Come first, men. Mga lalaki, diri, brad. Right here. Brad, right here, taas. Diri sa taas, brad. Please do not block the way. Come, diri. Diri sa taas, brad. Brad, don't block the way. Don't block the way. Yes, God bless you. Thank you. Come on, come on. Don't block the way. Brad, diri. Diri, diri, diri. Diri, diri, brad, diri. God bless you. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Yes, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Now, ladies, if you like to come, please come right now. Come, ladies, stand to your feet. Go to the aisle. Come and say to the Lord, Lord, here I am. Use me. Use me to my greatest usefulness. Honor your name in my life. Here I am. Yes, God bless you. Thank you, ladies. Ladies, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Can't help them. Help them over there. Yes, God bless you. Thank you. Yes, ladies are coming. Come on, die. Let's go. Let's go. They are at the back. Yes, coming. God bless you, Heavenly Father. I want to thank you for your power and your love. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the testimony of our missionaries. Thank you for the testimony of this church. Thank you for these men and women kneeling before you tonight. And Lord, I pray that the power of the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit will be upon them and that you will be the one to direct their, 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 uh, their, their steps and guide them. And Lord, you're going to engineer the thing that you are going to allow them to go, the circumstances that will come to them. Please, Lord, give them grace. Give them wisdom. Give them the determination to love you and to serve you whatever instance it may be. Lord, we commit ourselves, we give you the glory tonight. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And